the privacy settings are now such that nobody sees it once we're done. We can just change the privacy settings mm -hmm. automatically. Yep, so it's recording now. So it's ready, so as long as all looks like this, we are good. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Our core goals are to increase cultural tourism, foster greater activity, increase accessibility, and enhance the quality of life. And this is just a map that shows where our core infrastructures would be located. At the top, we have the Riverview, and that would be located where uh, Victoria Park Bus Barn is located. Uh, the Stampede Scratch would be along the Stampede Trail. Across from that, we have the Calgary Cultural Center, which leads to the Calgary Courtyard. For our first design, we came up with a half hotel, half apartment style complex, which is called the Riverview. And our slogan for that is work with play with a view. So this is just our layout for it. It has 10 levels. Um, some of the features that or amenities that we have are the mixed use lobby on level one, an indoor pool, daycare, and rooftop bar, just name a few. This is just depicting our half uh, apartment style and half hotel style spaces. On the left, we have the apartment style and the right uh, hotel style. And the lobby would be split in half so that it would be a communal space, but split for each side to have their own space. And you can see these are the units, just a little closer up. Uh, the apartment style would have a full kitchen with laundry space, and the hotel style would have the kitchenette style with um, a laundromat on the fifth floor that they can access. And each uh, unit has three beds and two baths. And each has a unique theme, which would include contemporary, industrial, modern, or urban. And then we have some more renderings. And our values behind this are to provide adequate space for tourists and residents, uh, create some amenities to contribute uh, community space, and mixed use that would create stability in the city. Okay, moving right along to our Stampede Scratch, located along the Stampede Trail. This is the, the arena, the proposed arena. After events and such, they can congregate at this event area. Okay, so some of our features on the top level, we will have retail shops to attract tourism and the community can thrive there. We will have themed walk-up restaurant stalls outdoors so they can come, line up, get their food, move on to the community seating area to enjoy live music and entertainment there. Um, we really wanted to in culture, like get the culture of the, the essence of the culture in this space with a chic environment. So this is the layout. On the top level, we don't have depicted, but it would be retail shops, and then these would be the five stall food stalls with a patio and live entertainment that can be local bands or such things as well. Okay, and this is our vision. We wanted to make it vibrant and eye-catching. We would have stalls depicted up here, something along those lines, with entertainment on the patio, with plenty of seating for people to gather and enjoy their food from all cultures. And the values behind this, it would be ideal for nightlife after events from the proposed stadium. Um, it's the post arena hub, day to night operating hours. So we'll have restaurants open in the morning all the way through to bars at night um, with rotating menus for everyone who's like. Well, today we're here to talk about um, the East Victoria Park representation. But most important, we're here to talk about Calgary's future. So, as you might know, um, Calgary has the main goal of um, increasing diversity and increase, increasing, um, develop um, the cultural um, space and cultural things here in the city. And thinking about that, we decided to respect three simple values. They are essence of people, vibrancy, and connectivity, right? So, during our research, we found out that um, Calgary has like 30% of, of its population are immigrants, and 4% of its population are Aboriginal. So we decided to get all of this information together, and we come, come up with, came up with um, the cultural, Calgary Cultural Center. Yeah, uh, it's an eco-friendly space um, where we have offices that people can rent. We're gonna have uh, places to food trucks, so people can try all kinds of food from all around the world. And we're also having um, another ground path that will connect to the other parts of the city, which um, we're going to show you later. 
And oh, just to um, remember, um, our inspiration was the market hall from Netherlands. Okay. Um, so last but not least, we uh, came up with the Calgary Courtyard. So it's basically a multi-purpose green space that offer space for a year-round evolving life festival and event culture. Okay, so here's our vision about like how it's going to look like. So maybe we should provide uh, running drinkable water for the people around and some shade by building up a beautifully designed gazebo, uh, some interactive art installations, outdoor sitting space, and inspired from Amsterdam Light Festival. We, this is our main attraction in the middle over there. It's gonna be the Light Festival. Uh, the, light, the idea behind the Light Festival is that it's gonna be a year round, and um, you know it, the theme change with the season, so it attracts something different, attract different people, because it's gonna be a different experience every time. And uh, it's also beneficial for the local community if we can work together with local artists. Okay, um, the next one is going to be our uh, um, supporting facilities. Uh, we propose that uh, idea to connect the East Village and the Rivers District by building the integrated bike path, as well as having an um, uh, underground parking space underneath the courtyard for the bikes. That way people are encouraged to bike more and live a healthy lifestyle, but we're also aware of the challenge in the winter. So in the Netherlands, they have um, heated bike path. Uh, so that's also an alternative to the problem. Okay, uh, connected to the heated bike path. Uh, from our research, we found that um, Canada has a great potential to build hydroelectricity. And that way, it's the energy the energy uh, produced are sustainable and safe for the environment. We can see that the green bars there over there is the like the potential for the building hydroelectricity, while the blue bars are um the the, the facilities that are uh, already built built by now. So we can see have great potential there. Okay, and next we do have a video to wrap up our presentation. To conclude, um, we wanted to capture the essence of the people, the vibrancy, and the connectivity of the pedestrians. And we will be adding, this will be what we would add, continue to build. to go to the courtyard too. So everything is so integrated that I think, I don't know which one is my, yeah. Yeah. the most important. I think to follow up on that, do you think that uh, they must all be done at the same time or could you imagine them being phased? Definitely, I think phased. I mean, any big project like this would have to go in phases. We couldn't put them all up overnight. So um, we would start 
with the CCC, which is the archway, and then from there we would build the courtyard, and from there probably the underground passageway, and finally the um, Stampede Scratch. Yeah, and the Riverview. And the Riverview, why the Riverview last? Because it's the largest project, I think. Probably the, we could do that simultaneously with the others because it is off on its own and we would have to like destroy the other infrastructure that's already there, so. <laughs> it's just such a great space to utilize. It's right on the river there, so it has a lot of potential. Um, you had mentioned um, access to hydroelectric, and Elder is actually known not necessarily for hydroelectric potential. Mm -hmm. There's potential here. Mm -hmm. Did you explore other renewable energy, like solar or wind? Yeah, yeah, we did uh, look up to that, but uh, I talked to some people as well about it, and uh, it, it might be a challenge. I mean, every every sources have different challenges, and uh, for example, the solar panel. Uh, it the, the the sun the sunshine that we have here might not be consistent, and uh, for example with the wind as well maybe and um, yeah so and we have a lot of potential there so we we found that maybe it, it can be explored a bit more to the hydro electric. Okay. And what about um, what about the development that we're working on? Here? Is what triggered you? To and we've had some good examples of couple from Amsterdam, mm -hmm. from maybe quickly from each of your perspectives in this country. Mm -hmm. what, what is your major precedent that you would say you apply to this work? Um, actually, the cultural aspect. Um, in my town, every year we have a festival that's uh, brought over from Italy. Mm -hmm. So um, we run that, and it's just a very interesting time for everyone, and everyone comes together for that one day and just has fun and has a, a, a great community event. So, yeah. in Brazil, um, I live in Sao Paulo, and we have like a neighborhood that is only it's a Japanese neighborhood. So everyone who goes to Sao Paulo wants to go there to see um, the different the different culture, you know. And we talk about that, and that's why we decided to do things that people could try, um, like different foods from all countries and all. I'm from Sarasota, Florida, where tourism is booming right now. Um, there's a University Parkway Center that just um, was built in the last few years, and there was absolutely nothing there, and now it's like a thriving community, so I really wanted to focus on building up the community from the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. The, po the popular concept there is uh, an integrated living where you can find everything in one building. So it's also like kind of um, a lifestyle of change as well that we want to promote, like building the one big building and uh, have everything together where people can just enjoy their time. Uh, at the same time, I'm studying in the Netherlands. And we came with, a, that, that inspired us to build the courtyard because they have a great a space there in every city called Rotemark and people just use that for different kinds of purposes you know there are uh, for example a market as simple as a fish market or um what do you call it the carnival yeah, yeah something like that yeah so yeah it's kind of very very animal mm -hmm. um i think we're almost at time i wanted to just say a couple words that if you can carry this conference through the rest of your career i'll be reading about you so Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Concordia. Our names are Emily, Jeffrey, Piyush, and Carolina. And we want to thank our friend Michael that he could be here. So let's begin. So Concordia is the Latin word for unity and harmony. This is uh, the other day while we went down to the river district. That's what we found was lacking. We needed some more people there. We needed some more life, some more community. So that what we compose this park-like area where we have four key elements. Firstly, we have an elementary school. Second, we have a co-working space incubator. We have a community area and we have the First Nations Fountain. Now we'll just tell you a little bit more about it. And Pius, could you start by explaining our motivation? Sure. In a chaotic world that is becoming increasingly divided, we are looking to break down the divisions and bring people together. Inspiring. That's what inspires us. So, in order to do that, how to achieve community, sense of community, promote inclusion, attract more people to Canada? We want to live in Canada. So, what would we like to have in Canada? Uh, Carolina. Okay, so to begin, we're going to start with the elementary school. Our main target market are young families. So when we were searching and passing by, we realized that there were many day outs, but what about a school? So we found out three schools. The first one, the orange one, it's like for kids from 6 to 9. The purple one from 9 to 12. And the one that it's like yellow and orange it's an elementary school and a middle school so we saw here an opportunity because we were thinking the last school has only 141 students so if we want to attract more family and if we want to attract more like residents to be here we need to implement a school in our area now let's continue with Piyush that he wants to so what do we want over here in order to live in Calgary, we want some place where we can work, have something for income, and have a good life. So what we propose is a co-working space, an incubator for businesses, and an accelerator to take that business forward. So what's the co-working space? Okay. So whenever some freelancers or some visitors from outside who want to conduct some kind of business, they would be doing that at co-working space. We will be having some environment that is collaborative and we will be opening in local investors. We will be supporting them as well as local entrepreneurs that will be guiding them and helping them. So it's kind of a collaborative efforts towards achieving the business goals. Short term, long term, whatever. And the incubator will be the one where we will encourage startups to be set up. And in order to have a collaborative uh, effort towards uh, the growth, that incubator we provide with the help of local investors and the local entrepreneurs as well. An accelerator would take that growth forward. That's how it goes, it would be there. Then we are proposing to have restaurants and boutique shops over there, and that base would be situated uh, on the ground floor and the mezzanine floors. So that patrons from around the region can also visit there and spend some time over there, have a sense of community, not only the co-working space or the business people as such. And uh, these uh, buildings will be situated near the school, so that the people who are working over there can be uh, can have their families with them, and the children will be going to the school as well. Uh, as you can see in the maps over there, you can see uh, in the maps they are situated near the school. Next, please. 
So Emily, would you be able to discuss this? Yes, I okay. So <clears throat> thank you for coming. Uh, this is our community area that we are proposing. It is based on the teepees that were used by the First Nations as um, a sort of uh, covering area where that will be able to open and close depending on the weather. And this area will, um, it will host a variety of cultural events. We are planning on partnering with First Nation groups and having them work with us to help perform uh, or help to share their culture with um, maybe celebrations or holidays. And other groups in the area are welcome to do the same and to just create an area where it doesn't matter where people are from or who they are or where they've been. It's they're now Calgarians and they're going to be one collective unit. So this area is going to be large enough to host people, but it's also going to get that close-knit, tight community feeling. And we're also proposing with the New Central Library at Fort Calgary. The New Central Library has um, a program called Storytelling Now, where they have people from the First Nations that come in and tell classic stories. And we're proposing that we can work with them because they have so much expertise and experience with that, that we think that they could really help to create an outdoor space that would be really beautiful. And yeah, would you like to explain about the panel? Yes. So Walnut is the symbol of life. Uh, and the First Nation were the people that founded uh, this place. They started it, they gave it life, and they've been here for thousands of years. So that's why we want to make the center piece of this area a uh, fountain. We're taking inspiration from the Vila and Park Fountain in Oslo. Uh, this fountain has uh, six men struggling to keep up a basin of water. It represents the struggle of life, or the burden of life. And we want to do an inter interpretation of this with the local First Nations. Where instead of uh, six men, it's going to be a person from each tribe that held, uh, that in a similar fashion uh, holds up a basin of water to present that they founded this land. They were here uh, for thousands of years. And an important note to this is we don't want to do this for them. We don't want to do it with them. They want, need to be a part of this uh, for, to ensure that it's a success and that people will uh, like it and it will be true to their culture. So. Emily, will you tell us a little bit about how we can see it from here? Yes. So in our in order to get this project rolling, we have three main partners that we need to work with. First and foremost is the school board. In order to build a community that is going to attract young families that want to be successful and excel, we need to have strong schools. So we need to work with the school board to help them set up a base with the best teachers, the best programs to give these small children a leg up to become successful later in life. And for the fountain and the community area, we need to work with the First Nations and the architects. We are, we have researched the First Nations, but we are not part of them. We don't, we haven't experienced everything. We don't fully understand. So we want the leaders of the First Nations to work with the architects to create something in this fountain and sculpture that is just going to be awe-inspiring and just breathtaking and that will just make you fall in love with Calgary and the history and everything. And finally, last but most important is the community. We need to have a community's background. We are doing this project because we wanted to create a sense of community. This is to, um, we want to inspire this sense of almost family ties. When we've been working on this project, we've just fallen in love with Calgary and all the history and everything about it. And we want to do everything we can to present that, that love in a tangible way and to just really make Calgarians feel special and Loved and important. So, 
that's the Calgary Concordia. I'll just quickly give a summary. We have four main parts. We have the elementary school, we have the co-working space and the incubator, we have the community area, and finally we have the uh, First Nation Council. With this, we believe that we can, uh, Calgary and the River District will have more community, more life, and will be a place where the Calgarians want to live, and where people from around the world want to live, and where we want to live. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Um, where are you, where are you from, first of all? I'm from Florida. I'm from Denmark. You're from India. Colombia. Lovely. And then Michael, who's not here, is from Ghana. Yeah. Okay, so do you see, great ideas. Um, did you see the youth campus when you were walking around? There's a school near the Calgary Stampede. It's a music-based school for all the children. There is one there. There's not one in East Village, which is always a mistake of our uh, plan in my mind. So I'm glad that you touched on it because more of them would be a good idea. When you present a diagram like this, uh, my mind obviously thinks about what, where would it be? Is it, is it about where it would be in the district, or is it more about your fundamentals? Yeah. We have a. We were thinking this is the biggest open space that we can find in the area, so we don't know exactly how to format it to fit in that space, but we figured um, that would be professional architects that would be able to create something that would be just as important. Can I add something to that? Yes. I think the most important part is that uh, it's a center point of like a community that's going to be that. So that needs to be room around it also for apartment buildings, more offices, hotels and all that. So the most important part, uh, part is that there's room and like it, it Needs to be the center of my work in the Okay. Um, that makes sense. What about the, the we all know community building takes time. How, what would you say is the central, most important um, Kickstarter to this plan, to this idea, these ideas? Which comes first? So it would be on two levels. One is the co working space, uh, the office space, so to speak. That we proposed, mm -hmm. uh, so that people would be uh, drawn towards the place. Mm -hmm. And second, and the most important, I'll say, is the event center that we have proposed. Uh, we have uh, some ideas about events that can be taking place over there that would actually involve the wider community, not only the First Nations, but wider community. And in those activities, uh, which will be representing each of uh, the First Nations, actually the community, the larger community, would be participating in those activities. Like they themselves will be doing and participating in those activities. Yeah. That will build that kind of uh, community feeling, the sense of belonging, as well as uh, the communication that needs to be there amongst uh, different First Nations, as well as the wider community at large. Yeah. And it, it, uh, just to add one more point, it would be cyclical kind of, I mean, uh, it would be maybe quarterly thing that would be happening, or uh, maybe even monthly if it is possible. Because there are some other communities as well, like some minorities. You you had a good um, slide in here that talked about who you kind of how you start this process, and you talked with three people, which I appreciate it. Normally, this doesn't just happen. Um, maybe have you given a deeper thought to how? Um, so this would be the who you need to get started with, and how would you say the best way to engage those three groups? I would say for the First Nations, I know that there's been a big kind of movement in Canada and the United States in general for reparations towards um, Indigenous peoples and other minority groups that have been discriminated against. And I feel like if we can partner with the local government and come to the First Nation communities and say, present it as a, this is part of the reparations. This is, we want to do this right. We want to show that you're important and that we want to um, work with you and create something beautiful. Uh, can I add something to yeah, that? I think uh, one thing it needs is of course money. Uh, and one, I think an important part of this is by starting to get the elementary school started system with the school board 
and getting funding for that. Once you have that, it becomes a lot more uh, attractive for uh, outside investors to come in for apartment buildings around the place and for the actual uh, offices, the co-working space. Uh, co-working spaces are quite popular at the moment. I work at one back home where I, I, we have like a waiter list of half a year to a year. Uh, so it's very important like to get those invested in. And there's a lot of opportunities to get this uh, working space going. Uh, but an elementary school uh, would be a good start to also attract for the outside area uh, for private investment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to the Calgary Cultural Center, a place that embodies the definition of culture by the Project for Public Spaces. Our intention for this building is to create one location for all the 15 plus cultures within Calgary. So culture is the inter um, culture is the inter is the connection of human interactions. Um, and it cannot exist without um, people to enjoy, participate, and connect within it. Um, so within the River District, we wanted to bring people in beyond 10 days of the Calgary Stampede. Um, and we want to we're gonna have a constant throw, oh my gosh, a constant um, pull of people with our social events, such as um, cultural events, with the language center, um, a sledding trail, and a nice skating path. And so we'll be having a document with further details, and we'll hand that to you at the end. 
We can give you a moment, but for now, welcome to the Council Agriculture Center. The Council Agriculture Center will be located on the corner of 12th Avenue and the Future Stampede Trail, which we envision to become an all pedestrian area. The location was chosen because of the proximity to the Central Library and also to, this, uh, to the Studio Bell building, but also because of the easy accessibility for um, the local residents. Three private companies could propose ownership for each part of the facility. As you can see, we have chosen three, three local companies that could be uh, approached for that task. Our design of the Calgary Cultural Centre was inspired by the Cultural Centre in Fredericksburg, Denmark, that you can see up here. But your Cultural Centre will, instead of this wooden structure, include a sledding hill to account for the unique culture of winter sports that you have here in Canada. Now, let us have a look inside the facility. As you can see, the interior includes several classrooms, which will be mainly occupied by a language, language school, about which my colleague Camilla will talk later. Um, furthermore, there will be event spaces that you can see here, which could be used for traditional um, concerts, theaters, or um, ceremonies. But however, the main focus of the facility lies in encouraging cultural encounters in the open event, uh, in the open seating areas, and also in the rooftop cafe and bar, about which my lovely colleague Emily will talk later. <laughs> to attract the Calgarians and also visitors to spend more time in the uh, city center instead of going out to the mountains or somewhere else, um, cultural events could be held on the St. Trail in collaboration with the local restaurants and bars. For example, those may include um, culturally themed nights or a cultural uh, festival with a parade on the St. Trail and concerts in the St. venues. How I has mentioned before, in the cultural center, there will be also language centers that help people to learn new languages, but also to improve those that already know. It offers a lot of languages, uh, such as English, French, German, Italian, but also uh, Blackfoot and the other um, First uh, National Languages, um, as several classes uh, for all ages. And uh, in particular, um, the language centers aspire to welcome uh, students and families from other parts of the world, and also to reduce uh, the language barriers. Uh, I already know uh, the benefits uh, of this uh, uh, facility uh, because of uh, my one year experience in the language center of Cork in Ireland. So I want to ask all of you, have you ever actually felt refreshed while being outside in the freezing temperatures? <laughs> yeah, very little. So we want to bring you in and actually enjoy this winter at our rooftop Agu Bar, which is actually going to be a really unique experience within Calgary. So things that the bar will or cafe will offer, um, small menus and specialty drinks. Um, the igloos can be open to the public, so you can meet new friends and encourage those cultural connections, or they can be privatized and, and for you to enjoy the Calgary skyline. In particular, it's going to be a half cafe, half rooftop bar, and it is represented from the Cafe Benelux in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which has a very similar climate, as well as the Copa Club in London. And so this picture is actually how they use their igloos in the summer to be an all-year event. Okay, so another person of choosing the best activities and replicating the approach used by Tidal Town District in Queens County. Um, get learning, get social, get creative, and get fit. Um, we will offer activities for both kids and adults, such as yoga, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and Aikido. Also, we invite you to slide on our summer sledding hill, or take your bike and ride through a Stampede Trail. Um, after that, we encourage you to participate on a kite competition, uh, well, all these activities will encourage cultural encounters and interaction between cultures. 
So during the cold winter months that Calgary has, we're actually inviting people to go outdoors and enjoy the, the cold, the cold climate like guys out here. Um, so based on Emily's hometown of Green Bay, Wisconsin, we came up with this idea of a sliding uh, tubing hill. So this uh, tubing hill actually in, in Wisconsin, just in their opening season, welcomed more than 60,000 uh, tubers with a 20% increase rate uh, in the next couple of, of years. So we really wanted to bring in the, this is actually a miniature representation of the Rocky Mountains in Canada. So we wanted to bring them into the city. As Anne said, instead of people going to the mountains, they can stay inside the city. So we're actually bringing the mountains to them. Um, and then another, our other fun, I think most exciting activity that we came up with was the actual uh, skating trail. So, as Sergio said, during the summer, it'll be a bike a, a bike trail, but then during the winter, it'll become an ice skating trail where people will be able to skate down the Stampede uh, Trail. They'll be able to access international restaurants, bars, cafes along both sides of the streets. But then if skating is not your thing, you can also walk in their two ample catwalks along uh, each side of the trail. In order for the pedestrians to have a safe crossing through the trail, we have envisioned a controlled uh, rubberized mat that you can see there um, in the middle of, of the trail, in which pedestrians will be able to safely cross from one side to the other. So both of these winter activities, uh, we're expecting to get people outdoors and enjoy more, more of the cool weather. So from now on, the 15 plus local cultures here will have a place to gather and thrive in their intercultural encounters. Um, and so a place or space, an empty parking lot, will become a place for friends and families alike to learn, create, gather, and grow with inside the city culture. Your everything. Yeah, so we're for sure. We're marketing for sure with more details so like prices and opening hours. We're already printing ready, so you can use that one to advertise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I should actually ask you questions. Um, thank you very much. You guys helped me with all of this in a, in a unique way, uh, some of the other things, and also a uh, way to solve the place that I think we got to win with. I'm often get missed. Uh, kind of the other week in summer and then you're being on the Have you looked at Calgary's climate and what's the unique piece of this climate in the winter um, that's different than the need where our most other places? Use the heavy rotation of them and what they are. No. That your local um, reps uh, should use in this site. But it's really interesting um, that we get these influxes of really warm weather to get a 20 degree yeah, change from one day to the other and have them quite frequently in the winter. So I, I'm from central Canada where it's just cold all winter long and here actually we get these reprieves. So something like the ice skating uh, trail would be something. To, to research a little bit about it because it's hard to maintain the outdoor experience. Is there a big two lights? Just a little context for you. Okay. Uh, we experience the weather influxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, people, when they have weddings, say bring every type of um, clothing. <laughs> it's known as an all month. So, um, I, I love the idea of the, the, the hill uh, uh, tubing area that actually could be a great add to our district. Um, when you talked about those three local companies, do you want to go a little deeper into why? Why those companies? I mean, you had Ainco, you had a bike, uh, Sony, you had one other. Why those three? Well, we actually were considering one company to um, be the general um, owner of the building to take care of the maintenance. So we thought of um, a company that is rather experienced in that, like the Ainco, which is a big real estate company. Mm -hmm. probably know yes. It. Uh, and uh, then we were looking for a second company to take care of the rental and maintenance of the outdoor area, like the setting hill and the skating trail. And that's where we brought in the sports rental, because they probably have a lot of experience with renting out sports gear. And the third one, we were just considering some kind of unique local company to take care of the restaurant. 
and actually provide menus and um, cook all the dishes and take take care of that facility. So um, there, the cafe. It was, was just an open cafe, cafe yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah, it was right. just an open, you know, an idea. Mm -hmm. So I guess you know better about the local restaurants that could be interesting for that than yeah. 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 We we talked about it being really unique and specific. So not having a company that's already in existence unless it's a large company that owns all different restaurants like the facility is really yeah. uh unique the restaurant should be really unique mm -hmm. as well absolutely do you think that if you is this idea dependent on the building would yeah. this idea work um, without a structure yes so as you can see well Yes and no. Um, I guess you can have a hill in an ice skating trail. Um, as you can see in Titletown Green Bay, um, the structure behind it is actually just a cafe and an event space. And then they actually do have an open lawn on top where we host um, daily events um, like Slushy Saturdays. And they had a British week where you learn about British events. So. They do everything in this building, and it's not specific to cultural or language that we're proposing. But we understood this district as a cultural and entertainment district. So we really wanted to bring those aspects all into one location instead of spread out. So yes and no. I think you have this uh, hill on Prince Island or something. You visited it, right? Yeah, no, I don't know. It's on Patrick's Island. Oh, it's on Patrick's Island. I saw, yeah. yeah. So, it's you, really it's easily to live there. You do have a hill, but I think it's way cooler to have it combined with the cultural center where you actually attract people to go to the cultural center mm -hmm. and then they can also cherish um, the existence of the skating, uh, the sandy hill and the skating trail right there so that you can uh, really attract people to come all together from all different um, cultures, as the Calgarians as well as the many um, cultural communities you have here in Calgary, but that they all come together and have one common space. Yeah, and also it's a, a unique structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for this reason, we can attract more people. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad you addressed the, the draw of the mountains because it's actually a lot of tourists come and just kind of touch in Calgary and go to the mm -hmm. which I understand is not really beautiful. Um, I, I think your strategy of bringing the mountains here is pretty interesting. Um, and allowing you to be playful. Uh, what, what other, in, in quick summary, what would you say that you, you've done unique in that area that would be driving people to come over and above your center that you think would complement that? Maybe in addition to your center, is there any other area that has to come up here? You would use those grounds and talk to the people to add. On the stamping trail? Oh, in, the, oh. in, the, in the district. Oh, in the district. Um, we talked about having a local or an outdoor like amphitheater space and when we were down on the stampede trail we saw a sign that had an idea of one. Um, we just didn't have time to develop that idea as much as focusing on these, the details, but we did think about that and having an outdoor space for the summer especially to have those intercultural or encounters and traditional ceremonies and such. I think in general the, um, the areas already really interesting for um, tourists and Calgarians to go to because of the proximity to the East Village District, which had just recently um, revitalized. So I think this could just improve the attractiveness of the city center even further. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Thank you very well. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, yeah. Thank you, teacher. I think they sent it to you um, in all of our documents, but there's just my hand over. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Great. Smart new I heard the only problem here is that the company executives taking too long, Catherine. So I want you to be tough. She goes at three minutes. You yank the big hook, all right? I'm being on time. She's, she's on time? Yes. All right, all right, all right. We're, we're watching you. You're getting a great too. Like, you, can, you can tell me anytime. Uh, okay. okay. You get it. B plus. See? Next team. Next Team CMS P2, and we are here today to present the challenge the Congress Municipality Land Corporation Challenge. Uh, like I'm Gabriel, I'm from Brazil. I'm Giovanni from Colombia. I'm Susanna from Italy. I'm Elizabeth from Serbia. I'm Colin from the United States. So, yeah, perfect. Now we know each other, we have our slogan here that this yeah. lifestyle is a choice, choose the most memorable. Uh, moreover, we also have a purpose. So we want to help Calgary Municipality Land Corporation to create, grow, and prosper. We want to develop the East Victoria Park region in order to make it lively and vibrant. Intro people, attracting them with cultural activities and quality of life. So uh, in order to give you a context, we developed uh, three uh, proposals that are going to take place at the government municipality. So the first one is the recreational center, the second one is the Olympic Way, and the third one is the stadium. Uh, now I'm just going to give you a brief uh, introduction about this, and then later my colleagues will come with the details of each one of the activities. So for the recreational center, uh, we thought including like some sports centers, some uh, sport courts, as well as workout activities and equipments, like everything related to the uh, everything related to the health and like your body, you know? The target place for the recreational center would be the younger uh, the younger population of like the Calgary uh, region. So for the second one we have the Olympic Way, which I think is like fantastic. So uh, we are going with a different uh, idea of the first one. So we are coming with a cultural thing as well as like a social engagement uh, together with like this outstanding and phenomenal uh, seasonal design. So the target place for the Olympic Way would be the tourists as well as the citizens from Calgary. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, we have the stadium proposal. So we created a different concept for it. So, for instance, you do have like concerts, games, as well as like events, but at the same time, people would be able to go there. This place will like 
give the opportunity for people to go shopping and do the related activities. Uh, keeping them connected while the events are or not taking place. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the first proposal that we came up with, which is the recreational center. So, so the minority of this, yeah, well, this is going to be located in uh, Ray Transit Victoria Park, as you can see here in the image. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be a sports center, and well, as you mentioned before, it will be a sports center to play to work in different sports and different types of activities. We will have ass skating and roller skating uh, in the rooftop, what well, this depends on the season. There will be there will also be a running track around inside the building, around the the, um, the sports center. So in that way, uh, it doesn't matter which season we're in, everybody will go there and walk and work out and do some exercise. It doesn't matter the, the season of animation. So if it is winter or summer or if it is uh, autumn or spring. So we also believe that the design is really important. So we want it to be appealing and attractive to other people. So we thought like a legal design. So for us, legal legally uh, shows and projects uh, connectivity, connection, diversity, and fun. So this is what the people uh, will associate with the thing in the sports center. And well, this is this will be important like the police. And uh, well, this is just to uh, meet with your friends, with your family. So well, you you can just imagine like yourself uh, going like in the weekend with friends or in the weekdays. It doesn't matter. So this is our first proposal. Yeah. For the second proposal, uh, we decided to make the sports center goes around from 11th Avenue to the Settledon Stadium. Uh, we understood it will be um, uh, in the center of shops and restaurants, but I think we think this is not enough to attract more people. So our idea is based on design. Uh, nowadays, yeah, from young people to um, social media uh, members, they like to take like a good picture. So for the design is everything for us, and we thought it can change like seasonally, and it can be special also like for holidays like Easter, Halloween, and Christmas. Uh, to give you an example, uh, for Easter there can be like fake grays, green grays, grass in the roof, and with maybe like trees with flowers because it's spring, but also like uh, chocolate Easter eggs and rabbits everywhere. And our last uh, idea are photo spots uh, to put like in every, in every like design, different design. And maybe they can be connected to uh, an hashtag. They can like um, uh, advertise the location, the event, uh, and also maybe uh, they can be connected with a sponsor that can pay for it. Uh, I forgot, sorry, the cultural event. So as um, Calgary is a multinational city, we thought about to bring all the cultural events in the street. Every year they can host a different culture and it can be, they can take like food and cultural tradition in the street and enjoy everybody. <laughs> okay, so the third proposal is a satellite stadium, the renovation of the satellite stadium. Uh, we would like to talk about uh, the shape of it. So currently it's the oval, but we would want it to be the rectangle shape. Um, also, uh, each side of the stadium, uh, we thought that it would be uh, nice if it's called by the famous lakes in Alberta. Uh, then, uh, on the two sides of the stadium, uh, we would like to have an extra space, uh, which would have like, three floors. On the third floor, there would be, for example, arcade or bowling alley, or maybe a place for kids where they can play. Uh, then on the second floor, uh, we uh, thought about the shops, from homeware to the clothing or maybe books. And the ground floor uh, would be only bars and restaurants. And the long ground floor uh, would be open until late, so that people can, from the plays or games or festivals, go there to grab a drink or something like that. Then again, if it's possible, uh, we would like to have a, an underground parking lot. 
uh, but if it fits of course, but if it's not, then near the stadium, also on a one uh, underground parking lot. Then for the design, we kept it simple with the glass, and the design would resemble nature, so possibly uh, mountains and trees. Um, and uh, yeah, the place in between the stadium and the uh, like shopping center would consist of elevators and also bathrooms. Uh, the entrance from the train station, because we know that transport is important, uh, below the uh, entrance of the train, uh, below the entrance for the station, uh, for the station would be like the entrance for, for the parking lot. So in conclusion, we believe these three proposals have the uh, potential to bring a lively and stable environment to the downtown area and generate a lot more traffic throughout Calgary to this area, bringing people together. And we believe the uh, Recreation Center can bring a younger crowd. The uh, Olympic Way will bring a more international crowd that will bring uh, this through the festivals that we do have. And then the centerpiece would be the stadium, of course, bringing people together so we have events uh, before and after and multiple things going on around uh, so we keep people there. And we also would like to challenge the company itself to build on these ideas and uh, create something uh, phenomenal. Thank you. And um, if you have any other questions, we'll be free to answer them for you. Thank you very much. Good challenge. Um, I'm, I've been struck by all the diversity of all of the different countries. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, stay tuned to the stadium. There's an announcement on Monday about that, so uh, we might have to take you up on the stadium here. But uh, unfortunately, I think most of the stadium is going to be demolished, but a new one will come. What happens with your three ideas? Um, they're all, I like the diversity of them, but in them you have two uh, large buildings. What happens if you don't build those buildings? This is a question I get faced with every day in terms of funding and delivery of big projects. What does your plan fall apart? And what kind of portions of your idea could be transferred and how could they be realized without maybe a physical building? How would you bring that um, lifestyle and activity that comes with the recreational center if you weren't able to build the recreational center for a few years? How would you react to that? Well, for the recreational center. Is that instead of it, maybe there can be a parking lot or a park, park uh, for, for everyone. But the open gym mm -hmm. uh, and also for the children, but something innovative, like not something that we are used to seeing, for example, here on the campus or around the city. So maybe like to uh, add like a skating uh, park part around it, like around the mm -hmm. uh, park, and maybe like during the winter. People can go ice skating there, but during the summer or I don't know, spring, they can just skate there. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just to incorporate something that can that's it. Maybe like from the ideas that you have. I think you're bang on, I think the problem is that this is only one. So I believe Olympic Way is also a very good um, uh, placeholder for these. While everything is being built as well, mm -hmm. because we do not necessarily need to build anything. This is as decorations and festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, set up time is probably much more smaller mm -hmm. than you know it would be to construct new buildings, and it would uh, bring a new identity mm -hmm. to the downtown and uh, get a lot of attention. And I think we're excited for what happens next. Mm -hmm. Construction and delivery is Um, I asked a hundred types of questions too. Um, how I, I liked your notion of uh, connecting the hashtags to a sponsor. And sometimes it gets kind of lost. What do you think some of the sponsors that I should approach? Do you think that would bring to life some of these three things together? In, whether or not they're from Calgary, what kind of companies do you think or, or cultural? How do you how do you actually approach those folks? It was a great idea. So, so I was thinking uh, maybe partnering, partnering with other touring companies, possibly because Calgary is known for its uh, beauties, like its nature and everything, and they're not going to be up in uh, the mountains and 
the lakes all the time. They're going to have to eat, uh, you know, explore the city. They're not going to be up in the mountains the entire time. They want some time to settle down, enjoy like a little party or festival. And if we partner with them and kind of like, if, you know, one day they're touring and then they get like tickets to these festivals and, you know, into that area, it could generate good aspects. And, but also like uh, talking about marketing, for example, for Eastern period, maybe if there is like um, a chocolate industry around Calgary or in Alberta, they could sponsor their chocolate and create this event. Mm -hmm. So create a hashtag for this company. Mm -hmm. like, the piece of marketing. Do you think there would be an uh, advantage to doing some of that marketing in the mountains? Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. For the recreational center. Mm -hmm. I think that because if they live there, maybe, okay, so if they live near the Lake Lewis, mm -hmm. uh, maybe Lake Lewis can uh, be the partner, not the sponsor, for the stadium, mm -hmm. since the design that we uh, created is basically mountains and trees. Uh, so it's important that when it comes to sponsorships and uh, partnerships, it's important that both uh, parts uh, have benefits, mm -hmm. that they receive something. One other question you said, uh, the renovation to this attic and the one that's trying to go back to the house. Well, um, because a guy who left the day told us that the receiver is not working anymore, uh, they were thinking about a box. That's to make the lounge space for yeah. other things because they don't want it to just be for hockey games, they want it to be like concerts. Yeah, it's 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 we, we were told to yeah. it, it, It's very difficult to do.
Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for been with us today as we take you through how we saw this challenge that you presented us. We are Cultural Synergy and we wanted to show the fact that we come from a whole bunch of different cultures and backgrounds and countries but we could all come together under one front and unite to bring Calgary some new ideas for some places that y'all are looking to expand or looking to just differentiate throughout the city and make it so it's not just another walk in the park like any other city. Okay, I'm glad to present my team. Team is 17, Multiple Learning Design Synergy. This is Beatrice from Romania, Grace from Indonesia, and Andrea from Colombia, Katarina from the United States, and Roberto from Italy. So the topics I will cover in today are first, objectives, personal analysis, later we have our facilities or amenities proposals, and then we are um, to propose or strategy, which is the pillar of the proposals. And finally, the summary. The general uh, objectives we're trying to cover are to create uh, a more uh, urban centered uh, design, which should be fair to everyone, with more, ca more different uh, elements. Uh, we are uh, trying to make uh, country a unique experience to the visitors by enhancing the world center culture of the city as a whole. So before we start um, creating our um, strategy, we went to research and um, we found this point that we would have to pay attention um, to make the implementation go well. So some of them are like, um, we need to pay attention to the zoning so that we build the things at the right place. Um, and also, we want to build something that we can finish in a very short amount of time, but have a very long-term benefit, and also it doesn't break the bank. Um, then we also want to build community, we want them to engage each other, um, and we also want to reach out to them, so we have to uh, choose the correct um, broadcasting channel, so that we reach the right person in the right way. Um, and we also know that Calgaria are very interested in, in environmental friendliness, sustainability, so we would want to make something that can um, change the face of Calgary. Uh, and lastly, of course, is the legal issue, so we need to take all of the permits, etc., so everything will go well. So we did want to throw this quote in there for you, is we do often hear, is, if you build something, people are just going to come to it. And we wanted all of these ideas to be something where we want the leadership that's already established here to take these ideas and make them truly Calgary and truly into the culture of this city um, and take it from the perspective of people just visiting. So. Yeah, our uh, first proposal is uh, an historic hotel. Uh, why an hotel? Because uh, in that place uh, that we can see on the map, uh, the building is already there uh, and it's part of Calgary tradition. It's, even if it's only 100 years uh, old building, we would like to uh, keep it as it is, uh, refurbish it, and uh, uh, make it a, yeah, like an historical hotel, uh, since one of our main objects was to find a place where to host the 600 overnight guests that will join the city of Calgary due to the, to the expansion of Demos uh, Convention Center and due to the arena project or uh, event uh, center that is uh, yeah, planned for the two parking lots. Uh, the now in uh, East, East Victoria Park. Uh, in Opel, uh, why in Opel? Because uh, it's a project that is already in place in Atlanta and it's working, very furbished in mattress factory, and they transform it into um, an apartment building. Uh, they build up lofts. Our idea is slightly different. We would like to have uh, uh, like, uh, um, a train staff uh, so we could uh, maybe keep the Western cowboy atmosphere alive all year round, not only for the um, two weeks of the stamping event. More, let's say, not the classical stuff, but like more on a Disney way of looking at stuff, let's say more cast members. Um, moving on, our uh, next idea is a, a public sport uh, space that is shared by, uh, it's shared for uh, everybody. So like open 24 seven. Uh, in details, is gonna be like, in the surroundings of the arena or even center that uh, CMSC told us uh, they were already planning to, um, to build or, yeah. Um, basically, we're looking at the soccer field, we're looking at um, an outdoor gym, and we're looking at basketball courts. 
Why? Because uh, based on what uh, Amber from CMSC told us, uh, the basketball court that was built next to the library, uh, basically the space was uh, really small. They don't, uh, they don't really know how to develop that area, but apparently it turned out really well, and it was only a $50,000 uh, project. So this, uh, like our idea will not impact in a bad way the, the finances of CMSC or the city of Calgary. Um, while we're looking at this, uh, because in Santa Monica, in LA, uh, the street work out there especially, it's really working out. There are millions of people visiting the area uh, every year. So this could be like used by Canadians, so like Calgarians living here. Uh, it's a safe place where to send your kid like playing soccer, uh, playing uh, yeah, gymnastic tricks or basketball. And it could also be an attraction for, uh, for tourists, uh, definitely. Uh, it could also be a chance for partnerships, uh, like uh, local businesses finding like their way uh, to get into the area. Maybe we were looking at Jumbo Jewelries or like some smoothie uh, bar or like sporting goods stores and like, providing what's, uh, what's needed. And basically, moving on to... Yeah. So the third solution that we came up with was more of a... We said a forest house instead of a greenhouse because a greenhouse is definitely an option. We are seeing that in British Columbia. They have done several. It's about a seven to ten thousand dollar project. But with this plot of land, we said why not go bigger? It's also becoming more and practical in different cities. In Singapore is one example. There are also some cities in the US where we do have this thing called a food forest. And that's where it's basically a forest environment where we are growing food for farmers markets we've talked about, um, also supplying some of the local homeless shelters. We know Calgarians, we've been told, love volunteering, love being involved in their communities, and this definitely would be a way for them to see what is going on just outside their front door with other people and bring concern to other aspects of people's lives and to help the community out as well. Okay, so how are we going to implement our strategy? We thought about um, influencing brand investors, as uh, so you can see, our friend David Beckham in Medellin launching High Club Whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward for um, influencing promoter that give likes to the brand and to the channels that nowadays are very important, like social media. Um, basically, um, taking the most important um, to Instagram. And um, we are seeing that influencers <laughs> help reach up 81% of the decision of the purchase of a product or a service. So it's very really important to reactivate calorie as a brand. Yeah, just to sum up very quickly what we said. So our three main ideas, uh, the historical local, the sport complex, and the green forest like shared by shared for like everybody. And everything is gonna be supported by our marketing strategy in order to make it commercial, make it live. If you yeah, this is the business model we were looking at. So basically the three main ideas, uh, who's gonna use it, the community. So professionals, amateurs, uh, people playing sport, Calgarians uh, because people are living there, uh, are living there in the buildings that are already in place, and uh, tourists, as we said, uh, looking at the Santa Monica uh, model, or for example, if you look at uh, what's going on in Ireland and uh, in the area, um, how we will attract private investors where the land could be appealing because people are actually using it. It's going to turn out uh, turn out a nice area. And uh, then we well, increase the value of the definitely of the land, and CMSC could possibly rent or sell this land for a higher price, and as uh, as a consequence, more money to invest in other uh, projects. And we would like to open the floor to any questions you might have for us. I asked the one about the second question. That was great. That's good work. Thank you. Listen to Amber about fonts and layouts. <laughs> Well, there's a couple of fonts in there, but they're wrong. Um, I, you know what, you've, you've gone um, in a really great direction in terms of the business model and trying to understand marketing and planning it. Because a large part of, um, the, from my background is architecture, a large part of 
what we do in our success is actually populating it and getting it up there in the community. So I may have to do some job building for the actual job to support these so people success. You guys figured that out so it's really advanced for where you guys are. So thank you for that. Um, uh, sorry, I wrote down a couple of questions. What what have drew you to saying uh, it was a historic hotel rather than a new hotel? Um, it's not really an historic; it's like a recreation. So, like the inside of the building, we will try to match it with the age also of uh, when the warehouse is built, uh, 1910. Mm -hmm. um, then we also want to have like the staff inside to have like um, all dressed like um, the people from that time, and also like they are trained like. Like what Roberto say, like if you, if you go in Disneyland and the staffs are training through their characters. So um, it's like um, you can feel like you're a part of the culture, the history, and you also, and tourists also can like interact with the staff if they want to learn more about what whatever they are seeing or about the city, or like the staff can also tell them, oh, there's a stampede, or there's like this part of the city that you want to go to. So yeah, it's more of that. I also live with Roberto <laughs> Very Italian of you. Appropriate. <laughs> True. Um, so, in, uh, how about the addition of on our site, we're actually next to a river, and you've got a forest house. How do you think those two can communicate or kind of amplify each other? We definitely took into consideration, you know, irrigation would be um, an issue. We know part of the permits would be with the slope and whether or not. Um, how you get concrete out, if it was left parking lot, and that sort of thing. So we did take that into consideration, but we do think that with the river, it could definitely make more of a natural environment. If you had a natural irrigation system going through, and of course that would be more um, research that would be done for that, but it's definitely possible to make that through without the trees, the bushes, the fruits, the vegetables, that would be done there. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that the, the sports facility would be successful without the hotel? I mean, we found the research run by the government of Canada saying that Canadians are basically moving away from organized sports and we're looking for more uh, uh, leisure activities by themselves, especially because of lack of uh, infrastructures and because they're not placed uh, in, the right, in the right places, so they actually are not rich. And we think that placing uh, those kind of infrastructures like in such a central position would help uh, uh, Canadians get back on the street and like, because that, that was also another of the objectives, like find a, a way to get people again, uh, leave the city back in the street, being together and share something. Yeah, and I guess like one more last point on that, um, it's quite near the area, so we heard that, so we heard that um, the area is empty when there's uh, it's no longer stampede there. So if, because it's close by, then maybe it can bring some life into that area, mm -hmm. yeah. And what do you think would be the difference between the sports facility we have today and the successful sports? It, uh, it should be something like open 24 7, something that is accessible to everybody, something where people can just you know go play uh, without thinking about, oh, I'm not a pro. I can just go there, play, uh, meet some people, uh, get along, you know, share what I did, you know, what I, how was my day, you know, just something like that. Just create a nice atmosphere. It is exactly what, what what is going on right now in, in Los Angeles and or in Ireland or in one of those places. It's like, if I may add, yes, uh, we knew that. Uh, I mean, Amber told us that CMLC was more looking at uh, uh, northern cities, mm -hmm. so like Scandinavia or Copenhagen, Amsterdam. Uh, but we were asked to think outside the box. So we thought, why not a boring city? I mean, when we were uh, the other day, it was just amazing. I mean, the river walk and everything. So I don't know. Absolutely. It's, we want to look at all good options, wherever they're from. Kind of customize them to where we are. So mm -hmm. no, just, you guys did a really, really great job in terms of understanding the company. And um, maybe just the last question is what out of your um, and the original analysis, what came out the strongest in terms of all all of these six categories, what was the most impactful of the research for what you came I just want to say the way they're all interwoven with each other. It's not just one single idea. They can all stand alone, that's for sure. 
but when we were talking about different ideas, and you know, like, we don't know what to do, we don't know, because it's like we all come from different cities that offer so many different things, but it, it was really cool to see how all of our cultures work together to create all of these ideas and um, say, yes, this can stand alone, but this would help, like, the sporting complexes, if the sporting, like the soccer fields are right here with a fence and area to keep the balls from going in the street or something like that, but have like the forest in the background with volunteers, with tourists, with just keeping everybody active and out on the street and getting people involved with each other. That's one thing I think we were talking about a lot of our cultures miss today. We're so into social media, we're so into our screens and we're not hooking our heads up and looking at people, interacting with people, and all of these options give you a chance to interact with people you've never interacted with to the same place today. Well, thank you very much. Very Connections in and out of the city with the sole purpose of driving foot traffic. Okay, 
and then improve pedestrian and bike connections and even build new ones. Um, we have to see how we're going to develop open spaces. Are they enough? Do we need to develop them more? And improve the urban and residential areas. Um, we're very key in terms of the uh, partners we're going to partner with, the developers or investors. They have to be in line with the objective, which is work with and play. So we have to focus on preserving, not only just preserving, but also enhancing the historic um, and cultural areas within the district. And we want every person who, who walks around there to feel the Calgary culture. And we have to enhance the connections. All the space has to be walkable and be able to be active so that the foot traffic is what we're looking for. When, that's a challenge, so we go through that. So we approach this by trying to identify who a Calgarian is, what is the trait of a Calgarian. And based on interactions over the last four or five days, we realize they're entrepreneurial, okay? They're very innovative in thinking, they're well educated, they're community minded. Um, they family focus and a community to work, work life balance. So based on that, we identify what is the priority. And you can see the priority mirrors the traits. So they want to protect the environment. They want economic improvements. They want to protect recreational areas. And they're very big on social services. In terms of supportive data, very impressive in terms of the visitors who come to Canada. So last year there were 21.1 million. And of that, 7.7 came into the field. From a tourism point of view, the government has partnered with the key strategic partners to be able to drive the volume. So what we have to propose is solutions on how to bring in more visitors. And one of the key areas that was interesting for us was the population of the East Village. In 2018, it was 3,543. So our client wants to drive that by 8,000 in 20 years. So a, a jump of 325%, mm -hmm. approximately 400 new residents per year. So my teammates will show you how we can do that. So then we have our proposal for what, how we're going to help drive the East Village. So this is our family. This is the Johnson family. We have the mom and dad and little Kate. Nice. <laughs> we have the mom in the car and the dad walking. then we have our village and what it could potentially look like. It was And lofts have been successful in cities like Atlanta, and that's where I am from. And we take old warehouses and we turn them into loft buildings so that they're usable and you're not having an empty building sitting here. Um, we want to go for young working professionals that would prefer a living space like this. Um, we also want to put a workplace in the area so that they're living and working in the same community. So we are proposing that you have a large office complex to give them that opportunity for employment in that area. Um, and then we have that live work play. So along with that, you have to have a medical center, you have to have police facilities, you have to have your shopping centers, your supermarkets, your coffee shops, your restaurants. 
So this is one of the pictures that we've used um, to show what it could look like with the green space and proper landscaping. And then we have some others that we've also looked at. And then this was where our park was, that little cake liked to play in. Um, and then we have our outdoor restaurants and cafes, um, shopping areas. Having a retractable roof over that, I think, would be very wise to make it a very street friendly year round. You're not having an area that you're not only allowed to use during warm weather, but with the cold weather and the snow and everything you have here, if you have a retractable roof, you can stay closed during the winter and open when the weather is nice. And that's another idea that I brought from my hometown because the city of Atlanta did that with our stadium. And now we're also looking at a powered sidewalk um, that would allow for faster foot traffic by through your stampede. Um, when you have the stampede people leaving that entertainment center, you can move traffic more, a little more quicker. Okay. So what is really important in Calgary, we realize that art is a major focus point. There is street art a little bit everywhere. So what we want to do is to involve people from this village into that art creation process. So what we thought about is having a whole wall that would be dedicated to that. So uh, there would be a competition. So through a website, artists that want to display their work would present their project, and then the inhabitants of the neighborhood would be voting for the one they like the most, and the winner would get to display the project on the wall. So it would stay for between two years and five years, so there is always a renewing, and we keep uh, involving the inhabitants into the process. Still on art, we would like to have something that is uh, an auction bidding. So, what is uh, one of the biggest events in uh, Calgary? It's going to be the stampede, and what are the two main animals in stampede? That's the bull and the horses. So, what we would like to do is create an auction with statues of bulls and uh, horses, but like normal statue without color or painting or anything. So the highest bidder would get to uh, choose the color and the motif they want on the statue. And then they would choose also where inside the, the city they want it, but on like pretty fine spots so it does match the city and doesn't disturb anything else. And that would uh, create a revenue for the municipality to reinvest into where it's needed. And finally, we would like to create a recreation center uh, more uh, based on sport activities. So it would allow to have uh, all type of activity all year long, uh, including the really cold and yeah, months. So there would be like uh, indoor soccer, lacrosse, basketball, uh, jogging track, but also a gym, a swimming pool, and so you would have uh, all these activities. Uh, you would have coaches uh, on certain times, so you would get lessons to improve. But there would also be a shuttle where you can just like reserve the space and have your own event, like if you want to have a play with your friends and things like that. So it would like attract the two type of persons. Yes, yeah, so that was our idea. We hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much. You have had a ton of ideas. Um, I appreciate that. That's a piece. Um, I think we could take on a lot more ideas if I kept going. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, what was your, you talked a little bit about some of the ideas you generated from your hometown. Yeah. Bit. What other, in, Okay, uh, from my point of view, I think what we actually did when we landed in Calgary, surprisingly on Sunday, they spent the night the day before in Calgary, we went into the East Village on our own. So we shared those experiences and what we noted. And 
I'm from Kenya. So the first thing I said, wait, there's nothing wrong with this area. What do you mean we have to revitalize them? We have our work cut out for you. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, but then when you start, and, and I had a friend who actually grew up in this village. So she was giving me first hand experience and saying, you know, when you walk around, there are no mom and pop shops. How many people do you speak? You know, things like that. So that and what they went through as well. So they you can talk maybe about yeah, your experience. Yeah, yes. yes. so I arrived right, on um, Wednesday last week and I was staying at the highest of Calgary, so right in the middle of this village. And yeah, so that was crazy cool to <laughs> stay here in the middle, so to really ambitious. get a feel of the neighborhood. But I was really surprised. So there is part where there is activity, but there is some part you're just like, you go home and that's all because yes. there is nothing else to do. Yeah. So that is why we went with the idea of creating kind of a village. Yeah. So people, when they are in the street, they want to stay in the street and they have tons of different things to do. So everyone gets a little piece of what they like. And yeah. What do you think? Because your strategy is not is more blanketed rather than targeted. I'd say. What do you think? Uh, the priority. To do first. I think that you should go with the development. If once you if you build things like you build housing, you bring in townhomes, you have apartments, you have lots. You're going to be able to draw in different sectors. You're not going through just the single working person. You can do townhomes and have lofts or townhomes that are three bedrooms plus providing more square footage where you can say if they if you build it they will come um where because i'm from atlanta we have we were also a post um at olympic city and we also had areas of our city that were very um run down and Life. high crime <laughs> yes we had we've had that so i've seen that firsthand if i can add one more time from a sure. revenue perspective we did some research in terms of which areas have the high price in terms of condos and townhouses. Yes. Yeah. So it's northwest, southwest, southeast, northeast, and it looks like the downtown Calgary, if you put it that way, they're going to have the most expensive because they go for about three million some and two to three bedroom between seventeen hundred and three thousand two hundred square footage. Right. So. Um, so one thing in the proposal you said uh, uh, an office building. Do you know what the vacancy rate is in that kind of It it looked well. My first experience with downtown Calgary was when we took our tour on Tuesday. Um, I was here Sunday, but wasn't able to go that far out. Um, but they, seeing how it was, it's really so it's, awful. Yeah. it's so we're, we we took the economic downturn. Mm -hmm. We have thirty percent vacancy. So you yeah. probably won't. The prediction is that you won't be building office space in Calgary. Okay. So that really affects how we start planning things. Mm -hmm. We also in our generation model, we get more tax um, revenue mm -hmm. from uh, office space than mm -hmm. residential. Yes. Yeah, no one's building us uh, office space. So you have to be really creative in what type of office space and how we put the project in. Okay. 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 Um, talk to me a little bit about the retractable earth. In your video, it looks like you could have kind of more shade shadow. So the, the professional I ever saw it was that we had our dome, um, the Mercedes Benz dome was built in Atlanta um, and it's like in the last year. And it's a circular building so that the pieces fit together where it slides open or they can slide it back. So it's closed and closed in completely or it's open and you have access to see you know, the sky and the air come in. Um, it's more open that way. But having a retractable roof, I think, that comes over the top and maybe slides back, I think would be a great way to do that, like overcoming the shops and the streets and then coming back. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Thank you very much. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.
We are the team five, and today we are going to show you our project for the CMC challenge. So first, let me introduce our team. I'm Sarah from Italy. I'm Cora from Indonesia. I'm Gianluca from Mexico. And I'm Vanessa. And our team name, uh, team name is High Five Culture, and our slogan is Energize, Radicalize, and Empower. So. First, let's see together our outline. So we have, we will show you our notice, then we will uh, also introduce to you the concept that we use in order to create our project. So again, energize, revitalize, and empower, and then we will have the conclusion. So let's start with the motives. So first, we, according to Kumar, uh, there is a trend, a green trend uh, nowadays. So there is a, a trend toward the green tourism, but also people are getting more aware about the sustainability. Then we want to focus on the togetherness. We want to create a community with this project. And last but not least, uh, we have the voice of Calgary. What did, how can we, how, can, how did we get it? So we made a survey. So we went around the city of Calgary and we collect more than 40 responses. And what we discovered is that the current issue is that in the historic park, there aren't a lot of infrastructure. Then people feel lonely. And they say that there are not a lot of events, except for, of course, the amazing centipede. And then uh, for the expectation, they would like more community garden, botanical garden, and also kids park and dogs park. And then we've discovered that actually also in Calgary is very important in sustainability. From a scale from one to five, they say uh, we have collected like an average of, of 4.5 uh, values for uh, the sustainability. So people are very interested in sustainability also here. And now uh, let me introduce Vanessa, that which she is going to talk about energize. So our first section is energy test. And you can see that we have our three components, a garden, a waterfall, and the system that we talked about. So first we kind of through energize in the survey, we discovered that we wanted to make a connection to the community. We wanted to energize the people, get them excited for something new, and something that they haven't seen before. We also wanted to have fun talking with them. We found that through social media and all of the internet stuff that's going on, people want to be connected with something that's real, something that brings them back to their roots and makes them feel comfortable. So through that, we found this structure. So let me explain a little bit. This is our, basically our community style garden, but the difference between this is, we call this a food forest. So the structure is just a regular site dome, and within the structure, we decided to use glass products and also pair that with solar panels. The glass structure that we would like to use, we wanted it to be similar to the Calgary Public Library to connect to the other projects and create a flow throughout CLMC um, events. Along with this, um, within, the, within the food forest, we wanted to create a, a type of biodiversity so that everybody could get attracted to this new thing and Calgarians could really find something different to attract them. So you may ask yourself, what is a food forest? Well, a food forest is different than your regular community garden. It brings more life. It actually maintains itself in a, in a certain way and uses new, new ideas like permaculture. Along with this, it revolves around sustainable power, sustainable food products, and uh, we decided to create a waterfall in the middle as well. And the waterfall is not only just for beautiful looks, it has a purpose. 
our waterfall is going to be used as an irrigation system to power the, the plants and be able to water it within itself. Along with this, um, we have we have the waterfall using as a source of humidity. So it's going to provide that warmth that you need to grow the plants. Along with this, um, we have rainwater collection. So we're going to use the snow, the unpredictable snow that is inevitable in Calgary, and the rain to be able to create more water and functionality within the space. Last but not least, we wanted it to be accessible to everybody. So we wanted it to have a space that everybody could feel like they could come to, whether you were old, young, just somewhere that could really build community. And here we go. We have our diagram that we actually worked with an Italian artist so that he could bring our idea to life. Um, you can see the waterfall in the middle here. We have some of our plants and then the type of dome shape that we're hoping to create. And then the second part of our mission is River Swans. So we have found three advantageous points with, with using our concept. We have sustainable target market restaurant all over school. As Sarah mentioned before, we conducted survey three going down South Calgary. We have seen a lot of constructions for housing areas. And I remember you mentioned in the media that you want to get a solution housing for 600 overnight visitors. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of talk around with the people, we kind of share our ideas. They also express uh, that they also want to have a sense of togetherness, and then they feel a little bit bored because they don't have nothing. And then we decided, why don't we mix the boat? And then we put it next to the garden, and then we have a one of a kind complex in Calgary. So maybe you can like to show the from the same designer, we have come up with this glass dome. It's, it's higher than the garden. We are targeting around 52 stories. So for the first part, as you can see here on the underground level, on the ground level, we're gonna give a chance for the local investors to open stores because we believe that Calgary has so many identity, cultural, and then maybe we can bring a lot of people to open their shops and then introduce perhaps the tourists. That's the next part. So the 10 floors, we're gonna make it as a hotel. So we have Calgary Stampede. Why not we provide more hotels? Because I remember, according to infographics that you have at CMLC, there's only three hotels. So it's, it's going to be very accessible. Maybe if they're going to have a fun time, we just go, that, go down, let's explore the local stores. And then, if you see that, restaurant. But here's the thing. We, we come up with a concept of in-house restaurant. And the better thing is uh, our ingredients are actually harvested from our garden as many as explained before. And then we believe that the target market, we managed to just expand our target market. At first, you mentioned about the youth and young families, but then because of this condo mix and the hotel, we also expand our target market to the tourists, local tourists. And perhaps because our building is one of a kind, a lot of international tourists would like to interest in Calgary. And then for the sustainable part, we presented the idea of solar panels all around the building. So the, the good thing about solar panel is, I know it's going to be quite costly, but remember the long-term investment. We want to make sure that the young families feel welcome, they're going to have a fantastic life, and then they have their own power. So we can perhaps market the housing area a little bit affordable, so they can have like a strong foundation. They feel like they're welcome. And then again, the activities in the garden, the restaurant goes on. It's going to be amazing. So, mm -hmm. and then we have the next slide, which is Empower. Are we able to start this already? Okay, what do you think is the main connection between Empower and our community? So, actually, there's not uh, any specific connection because we are going to empower all the community. We want to respect all, all people, all immigrants, all uh, nationalities, um, all, all people, young people, and old people. That's the reason that we believe that America. That Canada is um, a multicultural um, nation, and we we want to keep it like this. So if we if we think a little bit of, uh, a little bit deeper of this idea, it sounds like a, I don't know maybe like a futuristic uh, futuristic community, um, a safe a safe, sustainable, technological, friendly, and also a united community. So um, um, we want to add some multiple areas 
where people could dress, could uh, get up, uh, get up of this of the normal routine, of the normal um, that kind of. I mean, um, a senior goes going here, also they could have a good time relaxing. Um, a senior could um, grow plants, go walk the dog. And also we are thinking about a um, free car area. We are thinking about um, electric bicycles, electric scooters, that kind of, kind of transportation. So um, uh, there's, uh, we strongly believe that um, people who is going to live here um, will have, will live healthy, longer, with sustainability, with efficiency, and without without uh, environmental impact. So let's continue with Coral. I'd like to ask you guys a simple question. How does it feel to look into the future? This is the future of the next generation, the environment, the economy, and most importantly, childhood. We are going to provide housing and apartments for tourists, the housing for the locals, uh, We will have sustainable environment, and we have a lot of people behind this that will help us, and we have a video that will show you. So your, your, your whole premise of your project is um, predicated on sus uh, sustainability. I see it as economic and sustainability. Uh, and you're not the only group who said that sustainability is important to Calgary. How do you how did you get that information? Do you get that from community uh, research or from the university? Or? I guess I was basically like talking to the people and saying, I mean, we all have those values within us, but the moment that we step there and ask others what they thought. We just felt that it was so important that we implemented it. 
just have that you know, carry the spirit of I, I want that to be more reflective in our politics. <laughs> um, something for you guys to challenge next. Um, I, I am ex excited by the idea of a, um, a structure combining all of these things. Do you think the, um, how do you think this would influence the rest of the district? You're, you're talking about bringing people down. What other projects could be spun from what this is? Yeah. Actually, we want to help the community and uh, save resources, saving money, and also generating them and so it will to the community. Because um, we, we are not going to, to spend all the energy that we are going to generate. So then we can sell, and there is um, a kind of an interesting idea because um, we want to help the community, which is you know, not we want to. Um, Air money, we just want to have the community. And also, as uh, the survey shows, uh, there was like a need of the community, and our idea is to be able to see their uh, people because uh, a lot of them told us that uh, during the evening uh, or when the sun sets arise, people left this part of the city. So, our idea is to have their people also after mm -hmm. and during the night. And I think if you want to say, for the community center that we're hoping to implement in the community structure. We could have things where people could just relax, the cafes, the restaurants, the different events that we could have held in the food stores as well. Like people engaging, working on the gardens together, and have that older people teaching the younger people, like generating that moment. Thank you. Keep asking questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Three more. Three more. Twenty, thirty, and The jam is stopping us with that. <laughs> the jam is stopping us with that. There's another one crying yet, though. Who's crying? Someone out of your group. There's a smile on the other group because I hear they're crying. Who's crying? I think he's pulling your legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Italian leg. Is it going okay? She's great. She's yeah. great. So, um, yeah, ask a good question. Yes. Good. Yeah, yeah. I think a question for the governments. Okay. They did well with the companies this year. Mm -hmm. Great challenges and very good people. I don't want to get in trouble with the boss. We got all the kids in, there was about 10 parents. Who comes in five minutes late? Boss, I gotta go see my kids. I wouldn't let anybody else in here. If they're firing, we're running off the side. No, there's like seven that come out of the room and they're all happy. Just the next thing then? What's the key event for some of those groups that the audio could not work? Yeah. It has been that too now because, for example, the cartoon was amazing, but without the music. And what do you now do? What do you now do? What do you know about this? It was not that it's what you know. Because the new city is a lot of the But they managed to suffice by explaining the not just I mean. It's crazy. It's probably, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We are freezing. How do you jump in that? Yes, yes. <laughs> Right off the side of the wall. They see you right in the I'm trying to smile a lot, but I can't. <laughs> what a great program, huh? It's good for all of them. Okay, go. <laughs> what the synergy is, basically Calgary has a really bustling arts and entertainment scene. And when we were tasked to actually figure out how to actually enhance this culture, we were, well, we had a lot of questions, but then we realized there's one area that really, there's so much more room for development. Calgarians love volunteering, and it has one of the highest rates of volunteering, much more above than above average. So we decided that maybe we should work on this. When we thought about the residential concept, we actually decided to combine the idea of a hotel with a centralized volunteer hub for people to learn more about volunteering opportunities. And also because of increasing trends in working as you go, we decided to include a flexible working space. We want to create, we want to make sure that this is a place where everybody can gather and learn more about each other, local or international. So I'm Jia Kang. You can call me JK. Not kidding about that. And I'm, from, I'm from Singapore. I study business administration, majoring in finance. My name is Daya Perez. I am originally from the Dominican Republic, but currently I reside in Boston, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Karen Montgomery. I live in uh, California and have a background in construction engineering and uh, studied uh, business as well. Hi, I'm Simena from Peru. I am studying in France. So talking about building, the inspiration behind the building, right? So we want to focus on the exterior first because it's pretty symbolic. So myself being from Singapore, we have a, we have a couple of architectural projects, like the Super Tree Grove and Garden by the Bay, and Park Royal on Pickering by Woha. So the things in common is that basically these two architectural wonders attempt to either mimic nature or integrate nature into cold, harsh concrete to basically give a new life to the surroundings around it. So in idea, so basically in idea, in the ideation process, we decided to just first focus on drawing the trees because we want we felt, felt that that is something that would stand out for people to see. So we thought, we tried to experiment with different shapes. We tried to experiment with what is the symbolic meaning of each different part of a tree with respect to the building, and we had some initial sketches of the structure and how to build it. But then it got a little bit complicated, and we decided to take a step back to make it simpler. So this is the summer structure. This is. This is a little diagram that we have. We try, we try our hand in a bit of 3D drawing. So the levels, basically, level one would be the volunteer hub. Level two would be the flex space, which is the flexible working space. And level three and up will be the hotel, because definitely, Calgary is, is going to have more tourists over the next few years due to, its, due to all the plans that we're having for it. So the feature of it, so how did we design it? We basically based it on a pine tree, quite, quite intuitively, because there are a lot of pine trees in Canada. So, 
What and one reason why we decided to pick a pine tree also is because of this little sloping little gradient. And one thing that we learned about walking around river district is that the architecture is built so that it does not the buildings do not cast a shadow over the river. So we decided to stick to that rule to keep to that theme to keep it consistent with the river district. So what are these main features? So basically, there are balconies, there are layers of balconies on every level. That you know, they will all have gardens. They will also have a rooftop garden, and each of these gardens will have perennial plants, like, like for example, the common peony. So as KK was saying, the first floor would work as a volunteer hub. Our idea is to have this work as a volunteer center with tourists or Calgarians to come in and find out about the different volunteer opportunities that you can find uh, within the city. We focus so much on volunteering because it's been shown that it reduces isolation and it also helps people um, build pride in their community. If you put in some work in your community, you tend to want to take care of it. Uh, it's going to be run by the River Community Council, which um, Simone is going to say more later. But the way that we want to integrate the volunteering with the tourism is offering people discount um, accommodations if they offer to come and volunteer in Calgary. So it's kind of open the voluntary nature of Calgary to the rest of the world. The second level, we wanted to work as a uh, flex space concept, which is also like an increasing trend right now for people who are working on the go or they just want to pay for a set office space. They just pay for a fee, for a monthly fee. So you, our goal is to bring different entrepreneurs, or different business people to the center, um, to the river district, and hopefully in the future they would want to set up shop within the district and just you know purchase office space or just set up the business. And then the third floor and up, we just want to work it, um, have it work as a regular hotel. Again, offering the incentive of discounted accommodations if you um, decide to perform any volunteer um, opportunity within the recovery district. So another aspect that um, really stood out to us besides the volunteering was that Calgary is very sustainable and promotes that um, environmentally friendly and social responsibility. So we wanted to add that feature in some way into the building. So we um, would like to do that by making this building a living building. Um, so with living building, right, it takes it a little step farther than maybe LEED or some other certifications that kind of help to mitigate the negative impact and it actually helps to create a positive impact on our um, community um, by producing uh, uh, positive uh, water, positive energy for the building to make it self-sustaining in the case of if there's ever a, a natural disaster, that building can last for a while on what it has generated. Um, so with the, the, with the living building, um, there's seven different uh, pedals to, to get full certification. Um, currently, there's only 23 certified uh, living buildings in the world, so it's a great opportunity, we believe, to bring that innovation into this building. Um, and uh, there's full certification, sorry, there's also pedal certification, and I believe there is one pedal certified building in Calgary, um, which is at the, which is a residence, it's actually a residence, and there's a net zero uh, building in Calgary, which is at the zoo. Um, so, we believe that adding this feature to this building will help it create will help us to create like a landmark like we really want to promote um, not only the volunteering and the workspace but we also want to promote this sustainability um, and we can have interactive displays in order to tell a story and really draw people into the building okay so in order to make a martinez building more connected with the community we want to create a Rivers Community Council. It's going to be located in the first floor. And we want to work with some local organizations in, in order to have some programs. And what we want to do is, is, is to make the community engage and also to develop the community. And also we are going to make some events, art and cultural events, that is going to bring a new neighbors, new tourists, and make the city of Calgary more vibrant and energetic. And now we are going to show you a video that has some activities that we were thinking that it could really work.
Uh, we are going to name this project the River Series, and what we want to, to do is to make the city of Calgary more dynamic and like. Okay, so just to conclude, um, we really wanted to make um, a, a space where we could enhance the environment of Calgary, right? The live, the work, the play aspects all in one building while connecting to the rest of the community and the rest of the Rivers District. And we really wanted to promote the volunteering and the sustainability. Um, we believe that leads to a higher quality of life, which in, in turn creates better opportunities for us, not only in our current generation, but our future generations. And it also will bring in the locals and as well uh, connect the international tourists all in one place. So ultimately, we wanted to create the synergy building, you know, and the Rivers District, uh, the Rivers Community Council and the River Series um, in order to foster a vibrant and sustainable community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and actually, it's interesting because you, your idea has hit on um, a lot of the problematic issues that we find that are some of the more important than the buildings are really important, and it's the how we build people, how we get people into the spaces, and how we draw them in. So, you guys have ideas that we haven't done yet, and I'd like to see them. So, thank you. Um, would uh, maybe you had to start, but where would this hub, this synergistic building, be located? Place in the district? Mm, probably. So, we did not have a really specific spot. We were exploring possible options. Uh -huh. But then we, started, we felt that we could locate it at one of, at one of the empty parking lots, at one of the parking lots, parking spaces that not many, not many cars would be parked at because mm -hmm. as we were traveling around, we noticed there are a lot of empty spots. There's a lot of potential for development. So, preferably, I remember seeing a, a few that were near the river, at least. Before the before it hit the running track, so preferably at one of those locations because at close so that you can see not only the celebrations by the river, you can observe the natural scenery and you can see the rest of the river district. Because what we are doing is really to synchronize not only tourism and volunteer tourism, because Indian people are really traveling here, traveling to Calgary to enjoy to enjoy what to see what country the city has to offer. So we want to make sure that this is all in one concept: volunteering tourism, etc. So this is to create this for this overall experience. Okay, great. So it's not safe specific. No, yes. no, yeah. We just thought it would be a great concept, and I mean, we, we've only been here for a couple of days, but we've experienced a lot. And I mean, um, but we thought that you guys would probably know better where this would be like a good location. Fair enough. I really like that you. It's the first time we've heard, or I've heard, um, focus on the volunteerism, and I think that that's actually a good. Well, we learned about the volunteer rates um, through the challenge, but when we were walking and we spoke with Daniel, I think he did yes. the right, and he did say that currently there's not like a center, like a community center where people could just go and find out all the different information mm -hmm. about volunteer activities. So that's when like, okay, yes, this is something that they need, yep. or that the community would benefit from. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. When we had the big flood here in 2013. Our entire football stadium is filled with people just wanting to volunteer. So our problem was trying to redirect up yeah. to a place that we could go. So we hit on a good, good piece of Calgary. Um, I think also what I enjoyed is your uh, the community, uh, Rivers Community uh, Council. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that? Yeah, uh, we have a special activity here. We want to identify uh, a lot of activities for the community. In this activity, uh, we are going to volunteers that could be volunteers from Calgary and also tourists. And I think that it's really a good idea to bring tourists uh, to work in the amplification of events. They can bring new ideas mm -hmm. also to, to like the ideas that we were thinking about because we were all discussing about some ideas that we can make uh, near to the, to the river. And we came up with this video. So I think that so I think that it's really nice to to have a, a mixed group of People from here and people from other cities, and to bring new ideas to make a very more dynamic. I like that. Uh, also, was that your first time to really draw? 
I think the the concept and the way presented is really um, a, a very strong and interesting and a hand up is very professional. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, please. Please. QEC is from Ghana, but he couldn't make it because of visa restrictions. But we'd like to acknowledge his initial effort for the team. Yes, and so in our presentation, we have divided our solutions into four categories. First is housing, outdoor space, entertainment, and culinary culture. And first, we'd just, just like to say that we acknowledge that there is a very young demographic in Calgary. So we have focused on that demographic. We focused on people in the age of 18 to 38 because of the median age of Calgarians. Um, and our housing initiatives, uh, we also acknowledge that there is an increasing need for accommodation in Calgary. Um, so we have different initiatives for that. For example, one bedroom apartments, or three bedroom apartments. And then because of the new uh, event center, there might be a need for hotels as well. And then our ideas for making these buildings more attractive and innovative is to use upcycled materials. And they present various economic and environmental benefits. Um, and it's also a way of gaining possibly international attention. And it also accommodates this sustainability trend that is seen around the world today. And hopefully it could also maybe shift attention a little bit away from the oil industry into a more sustainable calorie. 
And the way to do this could be to use different materials from concrete to wood um, and still make architecturally beautiful uh, buildings that could, again, be very um, differentiated from other buildings. And you can see some examples of how it's done here. And what this also presents is an opportunity for CMLC to create partnerships with other uh, different um, companies within the area to gain these materials. And one idea we did come up with was if it's possible, then it could be a very uh, unique selling point if there was some waste left from the new library, possibly the wood from the beautiful ceiling. Um, another idea was the outdoor space. So we have seen that murals and public art is very important in Calgary. And uh, especially through this Art in the Public Realm program that you have. And what our idea was was to uh, get, uh, get the community more involved, for example, by hosting a competition where everyone could submit their uh, ideas for a mural uh, that could be placed around the city, and then to acknowledge the history of the sites. The uh, theme of it could be the future and the past of health. Next, I'm going to give uh, some suggestions about street furniture and free Wi-Fi as an option. Uh, first, bench is a good idea to, uh, is very good choice to be sent along the street. According to um, current results, which is a website of the uh, weather and the science, the num average number of freezing, <laughs> the average number of the days with the freezing temperature in Calgary is a uh, only 10. So it's appropriate to um, set some outdoor furniture such as a bench. Um, also, in a community with uh, um, about 600 visitors to be housed overnight per day, a uh, bench can provide them uh, enough rest to in order to extend their visiting time. Um, also, we suggest that Free Wi-Fi on the street can be provided as well, um, so that a lot of visitors can be attracted. Uh, this idea refers to the success of Edinburgh's free Wi-Fi project. Um, according to BBC's report, uh, Edinburgh's free Wi-Fi uh, is especially beneficial for millions of uh, visitors, and they encourage them to stay longer and uh, increase their spending. Um, next, our uh, next idea is uh, plan adoption. Uh, we suggest that the property managers can encourage the residents to adopt a plant or plant a flower or trees by themselves. Um, uh, it can promote people's care to the community. Um, this idea is inspired by a non-profit organization called the Victoria Garden in uh, Milwaukee, America. Um, in their latest re annual report, four schools and nine organizations joined them, and over 5,400 volunteer hours were created. Um, I think in a community with uh, about 8,000 new residents, the potential of a participation could be bigger. Now that we talked about ways people will sleep and how to make the um, general area more appealing, I think it's time to talk about one of the most important factors, and that's entertainment. Before I go any further, I will be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the fact that you guys have made strides with the addition of the bounce which is a great area for people from varying demographics to come and just enjoy spending time with each other. And also Studio Bell, where people can host events, go view exhibits, or even view concerts. This um, graph that you're looking at is a study done back in 2016 about how millennials like to spend their free time. As you can see from this um, graphic, they really like to spend their time doing things that they can do within the comfort of their home. And then going out is not a big part of what they like to do. Along with this, we also saw that millennials enjoy valid um, that they value spending their free time with friends and family. So taking this, so taking this into account, 
we realize that if we're going to make them come out, we have to do two things. We have to, one, make it unique and also involve one of the biggest values, which is family and friends. So in order to do so, we propose that we add an escape room. Now, there are a few escape rooms in Calgary already. But we feel that this one will be different by making them, um, by tailoring them to the history of Calgary through like historical events or historical people in Calgary. Our second suggestion was to add an um, augmented reality arena. This would be a great time to um, kick it, lay back, and just have fun with your friends, family, and just um, compete against each other and uh, compete in groups and complete challenges and rise up on a leaderboard and compete for prizes and bragging rights. So there's two types of people. Uh, one who would like to go out and have fun with friends and others who prefer more indoor stuff. So we thought of building a skate park. I think it would be great for the youngsters to come together and enjoy community. And another thing is esports. Esports has been growing lately, and even if the area doesn't really know much about esports, if we open gaming cafes, like the youth could get interested in it. And if other countries uh, use the arena to host such tournaments, then I think it would be great for the economy of the country. And if if you could grasp people that come from other countries to watch the tournament by other uh, entertainment facilities, I think it would be great. And these are some statistics that show like in 2017, uh, in China and North America, the revenue has reached to 362 million, and it's even growing further. A major cultural uplift for the city of Calgary could be a possible global food street. Now, Calgary has a diverse population, 7.5% of South Asian, 6.8% of Chinese, 1.5% Arab, and 30.1% of visual minorities, which is the core competency of Calgary. We are such a unique and diverse city. So I feel that the global food street serving cuisines from all around the world could really facilitate that and get that thing to function. Now, William H. White, an American urbanist, has really beautifully put this. If you want to see a place with activity, put out food. Now, to conclude our presentation, I would like to point out the concept of power of 10 plus. The concept of power of 10 plus it evaluates and facilitates placemaking, seeming to be like uh, in a certain place, in a certain neighborhood, in a certain district, people have 10 plus reasons to be within that place, and every other place, and every other thing, and every other activity is along the lines, walking sensibility with close proximity. So there are things for little children, there are things for young adults, there are things for the youth, there are things for adults, for couple, for individuals. So like there are already uh, things like the bounds, the library, the Stanford Park. In addition, if we could build some of our suggestions within that area, it would be the power of 10 plus. And this could really have the multiplier effect and get the that particular area and neighborhood to be more resourceful, people have been spending more time over there, and just getting the city more functioning. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, well told. Um, I kind of like that you guys have different strategies than some of the other teams that we've seen today. Um, I like that you started off and said that you're going to be um, focusing on millennials. What what would happen uh, with this if it was those millennials grew up? What hap would happen if they start becoming um, teenagers and grow? How do you how do you plan a process to adapt to that? Yeah. Um, I would think that growing up with millennials, um, most people like that families and different things like that. They grow up like that. And as they get older, maybe they may want to move out to a less noisy area where there's less commotion going on. But if the area is amazing and the kids enjoy growing up there, they'll make memories and have a lot of fun. And when they, they might go to school elsewhere, but they'll remember all the times they had here in Calgary and when they want to start um, their career and build a family, they're going to say, I remember how it was when I was younger, and I want to come back. Right. So you kind of adapt maybe with them more. Okay. Great. Um, 
where did you? I want to move to the place that only has ten days of freezing temperatures. Oh, is that an actual thing? Oh no, um, <laughs> that's awesome. I, I forgot to mention that it's from May to September. Nice. Yep. Got it. Yes. Summer. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> um, I think had, I don't know when we had snow recently, but it was in the spring. So we had it August last year, so those days, ten days. I just like through the winter. I'm like, you know, there's like ten more days. So like, <laughs> Sorry, I liked the idea of that. Um, what uh, you know, we're I, I'm right now working on the um, expansion of the convention center, and one of our consultants is pushing esports. Uh, why do you think it would work here? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think esports is a it brings people together. Like people from around the world can watch it even if like they're at their homes. So they can just watch the live streams and like they can see what Calgary can like how can they watch the tournament. And it, it brings like a larger do you, community together. Do you watch esports? Yeah. I for me it's just I don't I don't <laughs> do it. So my kids are starting to do it. Close my mind. So yeah, it's good cool. to know that millennials actually are thinking that. That's cool. Um, what's um, Global Food Street? Where do you think that would be? Where do you think that would be the best place? Yeah, so when we were um, taking the tour with DMLC, uh, we saw that the parking lot is going to be all those things that were parked in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that was going to be removed. The parking lots were to be removed. So I was initially thinking that that would be a good place to put the food streets. Because you from all around the world, because then there's the river walk right across, you know, people enjoy the food, and back and forth, a pedestrian tree walk. Um, if I would be able to see a lot more Calgary, I would say that any place that is within uh, a lot of other activities going on, that would be a great place to put them out there. Um, I, I like the notion of upcycle materials. Um, and we have our university, uh, our culture. Faculty is actually exploring some of that in the downtown campus, the old central library. Um, where do you think that has, uh, how do you think you plan for that? Not just taking materials that like they have back to the library, but how do you instill that into people's uh, development that they actually grow? How do they kind of buy into that? I'm not, I'm so just, how, do yeah. you, how do you get developers, people who are building buildings? Yes. To think that that's a good idea, it's something new to them, especially North America, that's a new concept. How do you get them excited about that? How do you get them to get your enthusiasm for using yeah. upcycled materials? What do you think? Definitely having a lot of conversations, but I also think that a really good selling point is the whole, like, maybe the economic aspect of it, like, they could save some money on doing that. So I think that would definitely be a selling point for them. Um, so, like, if you could get them excited through that, I think that would be the way to go. But then, of course, like you could push and say, like, but it is also really good for the environment, and a lot of other countries are so like excited about this that this could be a really unique opportunity for Calgary to to really differentiate. Um, I think we're off the time. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Ouais. So before I get to our first idea, I always like to understand the context of the actual challenge. So I found it for some preliminary research that came across in an article from CBC News, and Richard White has this quote in regards to the East Bay Park. How much one space can one city support, especially when it's all right next to each other? I kind of think that's a really weird way to think of it. I mean, <laughs> it's not about how much fun you have in this space, it's how much fun you could give to as many people as possible, how you activate these small, not used areas. So, I mean, this was kind of our idea throughout our kind of pitch and our project to have these multi layered things where it's not just for one person, it's for everyone. So, I'm just going to get right into my idea, and this is our first one. So, it's pop up patios. Um, I took this inspiration from Hamilton, I'm from Hamilton. So, I mean, I think it's only natural that you take things from your environment. Hamilton and Calgary kind of share this similar um, style. We both, we both were uh, blue collar and kind of transitioning into this white collar workforce. So, I mean, it kind of gives you an immediate impact to change your culture and it's right at the grassroots levels. So, pop up patios are basically pop up patios. Um, they occupy parking spaces into the street, which will allow people to slow down and walk through and actually kind of take in the downtown core of Calgary, see what local shops have to do. Next. So the implementation, this quote by one of the local shop owners in Hampton kind of really stood up to me. It's uh, to be able to occupy what amounts to a couple of parking spaces means a lot to me as a small business owner. I mean, this is incredible. Like real estate is super expensive, especially in Hamilton. So to be able to allow small business owners a little extra space to showcase their product while also slowing down um, Cal Calgarians in the downtown core will allow them to you know, maybe check it out and they can actually visualize it. Again, it's also like relates back to our first like pillar of sustainability. You can't have development if you don't have anyone else in charge. You have to start at the grassroots level. So I really think this pop up patios is a good way to do it. So we want to target small local business owners. In Hamilton, it's only for restaurant owners, but I think pop-up patios can be translated to owners that have small boutique, short boutique shops, so they can showcase jewelry, clothing, etc. So ideally, we want the pop-up patios to be located on the new proposed Sand Peak Trail, as it would be like the main road for the event center. So I think we'll be able to attract a lot of people 
we're also slowing down the traffic of people on foot exiting the event, so it kind of just gives back to the community. Um, ideally, like the pop patterns could start immediately. More realistically, probably 2020. I mean, summer started, so you don't want to just kind of not like half halfway through. But and how we do it is through an application process through the Calgary's Friday office. So you, you also like have to meet certain requirements. So your pop patios don't kind of take over the urban space. You don't want the patios to be the attraction. You want people to go there and experience it, but kind of just visualize Calgary as a whole. So that's our first idea. I'm going to pass it on. Ben. All right, so let's move to the second project. The second project we're going to focus on this area, which is between the 12th Avenue and the 14th Avenue. Uh, so we actually have two projects in this new project, which are the Calgary Art Gallery and the Bow River Gardens. So let's go for the first one. Calgary Art uh, Gallery. So we're realizing this uh, area, we have two buildings that are already focusing on art and culture, and we'd like to keep this uh, purpose for these buildings, uh, but we hasn't reassembled it and tried to make it even better. So for the first building, which is the Art Foundation building, we like to make an extension in order to make people able to display the artworks uh, so it, would, it could be a, an outdoor uh, section where people would just display everything. We, get, we really believe it would uh, attract people to this area to look at what people are doing. And also families, because the parents would come and look at um, what their children do. Uh, we also would like to work on the second building, uh, which um, we like to keep the same purpose. Uh, have some exhibitions, uh, so we like to uh, have exhibition on Canadian and Hungarian art uh, culture. Um, so we'd like to have first uh, permanent exhibitions, but also uh, temporary exhibitions, which are super important because you don't want people to get bored. Because they don't, if they come once and you don't change the, the exhibition, they're not going to come back. Well, if you change it every month, for example, they will come back and they won't get bored with this exhibition and they will like, oh, there's a new exhibition right now, let's go. So, so that's the idea. So with uh, sorry, with this first project, we're uh, really uh, willing to fulfill the first uh, pillar, which was the Calgary culture. So for the second project, we got inspired by Singapore uh, and their amazing job, Garden Bay. Uh, they created a whole garden, uh, attracting thousands and thousands of people every day. Um, so we kind of did the same with two sections. The first section is the Canadian Calgary Garden area. So we'd like to have a huge sample of plants from uh, the country, from the state, uh, from, from the region, uh, in, in, in order to emerge people in a Canadian environment, in the Canadian forest. The second area would be a do it by yourself um, vegetable garden. So during our research, we we realized that uh, Canadian and most particularly uh, Calgarian are willing to um, give time for the, for the society, for the city, and to volunteer. So with this uh, project, we would give them the opportunity to give them the city, make the city better uh, by guarding by themselves and making a beautiful place. Uh, the third one is a Blackfoot Confederacy section. So we uh, so the area we're focusing on uh, is where these people were based uh, on a long time ago. And we'd like to, um, let's say, uh, like do something for them, for, for them and try to educate people on, on, on the, the history of Calgary, which is super important. Uh, so we would like to have some plans uh, and uh, of, um, authentic object, for example, and try to educate people on how they use the plant. Uh, the Blackfoot people, uh, the Blackfoot uh, used to use the plant for medicine, for example, and I thought it's really interesting for people to, to learn about that and learn about how people would do like a long time ago in this area. So I'll introduce our third idea. Our third idea, so um, originally from the south of the part of the United States, it's really hot and I used to deal with the cold, so I was just thinking of doing something indoor. And then uh, Amber talked to us earlier this week and was talking about how there's full historic buildings located in the area. So us as a group thought it'd be really a good idea to revitalize the building and maybe do an indoor shopping center and, and a farmer's market. And so we thought we'd get three good uh, three examples from cities that have done before in the past and just explain those and see how they did it and bring in 
people to that area. So the first one is the Print Hall from Perth, Australia. It's actually the hometown of my teammate Jenny. She's the one that told me about this four-story building. And it's a shopping center uh, that uh, had brings in a uh, private retail to uh, for restaurants and bars. Uh, one thing the Perth city really took into mind was how historical preservation was really important to the citizens because it uh, represented the culture of the Perth people. Uh, originally, this building was built in 1932. Uh, it served as a newspaper factory for the West Australian uh, newspaper. And so the, what they did to bring out that culture is they kept the newspaper thing going. The main bar here is called the Gazette. Out front, you can find the small print. And then upstairs, you, right upstairs, you can see the Apple Davis. So you can see that's how they kept the newspaper thing going. And so our second example is actually St. Catherine's Marketplace in Ontario. We thought this would be a really good idea because it's in Canada. We could really relate with the same weather. Um, However, this is slightly different because it's a, a farmer's market, but it allows the citizens and the farmers of Ontario to come and display, sell their products, their food, things like that. So you get a really glimpse of the, the culture in Ontario. One awesome thing we actually like is, as you can see, they have uh, eco-friendly doors on the side. So in the winter, they keep them closed because of the weather, but in the summer, they actually open them up. It allows more foot traffic and it allows uh, airflow through. And then our third example would be the Anaheim Packing House located in Anaheim, California. This was our favorite idea because it did a mix of both of the examples. It was a shopping center and a farmer's market. Uh, this building was originally built in 1925, uh, shut down several years later. Uh, we like, also like this example because just like the CMC, they wanted to give citizens a reason to be there after 5 p.m. And this was a really rundown area before because and they really wanted to impress people because in Anaheim, they have Disneyland, and they're really competing with downtown Disney. Um, so, what they uh, what they did, like they actually have music vendors, which allows music people from the area to display their music and the culture like that. So it's a good glimpse of culture, and it brings in retail. So, in conclusion, we think implementing or re revitalizing an old uh, historical building would be a good idea. A good idea because it'd be sustainability. You would be able to reuse assets you already have save money there, and then also we would, uh, the private retail coming in would uh, be able to offer multicultural food and drinks like that, and then most importantly, with the farmer's market, it would allow the citizens to catch a glimpse of what the Calgarian culture is really like, and even tourists as well. So that's pretty much all our ideas we have today. Um, so thank you so much, especially you, Kate Thompson, for taking the time to listen to us. Thank you. That was great. Well done. Thank you. Your, your logo is very dynamic. Um, thank you for taking the time. And uh, it seems like as a group, you wouldn't have got to this solution without each other. So it's kind of interesting to see all of your backgrounds and the work you do this. So I uh, appreciate it. I, I think if I'm, I'm struck by how um, I could actually take your ideas and implement them. They're, they're not uh, a, a building that's floating in the sky. Um, you know, out of reach. Um, one of your ideas, those small public goods would have big impacts, which I think is a couple of the questions I have for you are um, for uh, the art in the area. You, talk, you talked about maybe think about some of the slides that you had for the, the art two days there. Do you see this? Um, uh, the one more, this is the garden. Do you think um, uh, this would be a building, or is this a kind of a, a space to using other buildings, or what do you envision? The extension? Yes. Uh, the extension of, of the existing building. Do you think that that could be reinforced elsewhere, or do you think it's just an application? Maybe we could make a, ver a veranda. Yeah. A veranda. Okay. So first of all, it would bring a lot of light, so it would be a really nice place. Second of all, uh, you'll, you'll be in the nature, but it's implemented in the gardens. So people will still be like in the, in the, in the gardens uh, with the artwork. So I feel like it would be really interesting to have a veranda with transparent and windows. Well, also to add to that, I mean, the idea of the art gallery is that it could just be standalone where it, we could just occupy the space. We don't actually need a building right away. So we could ramp up to that level because you don't want to commit yourself to something that isn't going to be feasible. Five years. Okay. Also, um, we also have these kind of art displays in Perth as well. So, it's 
Sometimes children will make their art and then they have them close cases outdoors depending on the weather and they can change it depending on the seasons as well. So I think, yeah. And also, um, really, we really want to focus on the area because they already had two established park uh, foundations. And then also, I noticed right beside they have the hospital ruins. Yeah. And I thought you might want to keep that in place because it really holds historical preservation and culture, so it'd bring more people over there. Um, I like that you integrated the Black Thank you. 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 Thank you.